You know, change is an interesting animal, so to speak. There are many things that have changed that I enjoy and appreciate. Like, for example, when I'm preparing my message for Sunday, my fingers hit the wrong key. Automatic spell check is an amazing thing to have. Of course, we still will want to review what we've written. Or how about, you know, same thing on your phone, when you're texting and you misspell a word, that's a wonderful thing. How about when you're doing a homework assignment, you need to find something and you're not sure about the details, so you just type up what you want in your search engine and voila, up pops all kinds of resources and links. Or you're watching the basketball or football game on your HD TV. I'll tell you what, even the newest ones there, it's breathtaking, the precision and the and the beauty and the, um, the, the, just the refined picture. Add to that to the fact that you can pause and rewind the play if you want to see it again and again and again. Having a phone that receives not only calls but takes high-def pictures, that's astounding. Instant communication with friends and family, thousands of miles away. It's wonderful. You can Skype or you can FaceTime. We've done that with missionaries halfway around the world. It's almost unthinkable, but it's true. And though I hate to date myself, one of my many all-time favorite inventions, apart from the remote, is the dishwasher. Now, I wasn't traumatized growing up at all, but I remember that every day uh, there were dishwashing chores around the house. We were assigned to that. Um, you took your turn with a family of eight that I grew up with. You all took your turn. Then after Pam and I got married, we were both working. It was necessary for me to take my time at the sink. So with other chores around the house and the yard, getting a dishwasher was a, a big-time welcome change. Add to that list, again, the remote. And you have not just a remote for the television. You have a remote for the air conditioning, a remote for the floor heater. Just think about it, and you can get a remote for it. And even though I'm a big cheerleader for change, there are some changes that challenge my comfort zone, such as I'm troubled by the changes that busyness and leisure bring into our already busy schedules and have disrupted our need for God's people to gather and worship and encourage each other. I'm concerned that people who are weak in the faith will fall prey to Satan's temptation to just stay home on Sundays or fall prey to the activities that the world has to offer on, each, on those days. I'm very deeply troubled to see the change and the decay in the moral foundation of our nation. Changes in attitudes about Jesus and his claims bother me. Changes in perspectives on marriage and sexuality and, and modestly deeply bothered me, and I'm sure it's, it bothers you too. It's not only what's happening out there. I feel unsettled about the fact that many Christians have seemingly lost their zeal for pure and holy lives. And while I feel that it's right to be bothered by these changes, taking a stand against them puts a person, especially a pastor, in a position that appears to be out of step with the reality of our culture. I've seen people shrug and frown when the teaching of the truth on different issues comes up. Even write to me in the church and write us off, so to speak. The truth is that when you take a stand and you go against the flow of popular culture, change can be intimidating. So what do we do when, when so many things that we cherish seem to be headed for the dumpster? In Psalm chapter 11, verses 3 and 4, David asked the same question. Follow with me as I read Psalm 11, verses 3 and 4. He starts in verse 1 to say, In the Lord I take refuge. And then he says in verse 3, If the fountains are destroyed, foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Well, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see. His eyelids test the children of men. David resolves our dilemma by affirming three important things about God. First, he reminds us that the Lord is in his holy temple. Listen, God's continuing presence assures us that his moral standards are not based on opinion polls, current trends, or popular perspective. His holiness 
is unthreatened by an unholy world. And in the end, his holiness will be the standard against which every thought and popular opinion will be judged. Secondly, David says, the Lord's throne is in heaven. God rules. Changing things here doesn't change his reign as the eternal king of kings, nor does it threaten to dethrone him for a trendier God, so to speak. His righteous authority will be in place long after our world's fleeting perspectives have gone up in smoke. Lastly, our text reminds us that his eyes see, his eyelids test the children of men. So knowing that a holy God, the king, is very much aware of all that's going on is either scary, it's either a scary thought or it's a confidence-building reality. Now, it's a scary thought if I've been in any way a part of rebellion against God's righteous ways. But as I live to affirm his ways, it builds my confidence to know that as I stand with him, Regardless of the pressure and the changes the world is making around me, God is watching over me. As intimidating as it might be to stand against the change in your classroom or at the water cooler or in the, in the neighborhood or even a casual chat with a friend, the, the intimidation begins to lose its grip when we see things in the light of our changeless God. It's Joe Stoll who said something like this. To be successful in this world, you have to know what things must change and at the same time keep a tenacious grip on the things that should not change. And that, my friends, is great advice. So take a moment. Consider how this changing moral and spiritual climate of our society has affected you. Be careful. Be careful that some unhealthy change doesn't seek to alter your beliefs about God or your understanding of what it means to live for Christ. And be challenged by the reality of things as David shared them regarding God and the changing world we live in. Him, live in. And I would also say be willing to stand strong against the change that puts Christians at odds with the principles and truth of God's word. Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. So remember, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of men. If the foundations of the world are destroyed, what can the righteous do? You and I as believers can put our trust in the Lord. Father, thank you for the opportunity today to just Open up a brief portion of your word and be challenged as we live in a world full of change. Not all that change has been bad, but Father, the spiritual and moral um, things of our society have gone down the drain, so to speak. And we need to stand true and strong as believers. So, Father, help us to look to you, knowing that you don't change and knowing that you are there to support us, encourage us, strengthen us, and empower us to live for you in this changing world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.